right, so this is my student growth through writing presentation. And what I attempted to do um, over the course of my student teaching was to monitor and track student growth through writing. Um, I assigned three different assignments, three different prompts for the students to use. I gave varying feedback and used different strategies to track their growth through the um, two months that I was their teacher. Just to give you a little bit of background of the school where I was at, um, it was a local middle school, so I had 46 sixth graders, um, ages 11 to 12. I had two English language learners, six gifted students, and four special needs students. Um, I taught both social studies and language arts, so they, they overlapped a lot. I taught a lot of the, social, the um, language arts classes. I taught social studies stuff in the language arts classes, integrated the two course classes as much as I could. Um, and it was the same students, so I got to see them twice a day, every day, which um, really helped me get to know them better as students and as learners, know their strengths and weaknesses. Um, the classes were very short. They were only 42-minute class periods, so we really had to cram a lot into a small amount of time. It was also in a rural um, area in Virginia, and um, there were varying ability levels. Um, most people were in the middle of the spectrum on ability levels. Um, like I said, we had six gifted. It was also a full inclusion school. So, and then the socioeconomic stat statuses um, vary a lot. So there were some kids that lacked motivation just because they didn't have the resources at home. People to push them, people to tell them to do their homework, or they had things that they had to do when they got home and didn't have time to spend a lot of um, their free time on classwork outside of school. For these three prompts that I used, um, they hit SOL. US 19 f because I taught um, history, social studies through 1865, US history through 1865. Um, so I mainly was teaching the Civil War during my whole student teaching experience. And SOL says, SOL 95 f sorry, says, the student will demonstrate knowledge of the causes, major events, and effects of the Civil War by describing the effects of war from the perspectives of Union and Confederate soldiers, including African American soldiers, women, and enslaved African Americans. I feel this is one of the most important parts of the Civil War, is to understand the effects that the Civil War had on not just men who fought, but also African Americans and also enslaved African Americans and females. Um, history is generally written by white males, so it's important to look at all different perspectives and really get into different groups' shoes. Um, all three of these prompts hit NCSS theme four, individual development and identity. So um, they're about how individuals developed through the Civil War and how the war affected their lives and changed them. And we mainly talked about the causes, the leaders, the battles and events, and the effects that the war had on the American population. So I had my students write three different letters. The first was from the perspective of soldiers. They could choose either a female soldier or a male soldier. They asked me if they could choose a female soldier and I allowed them to do that because some um, women did fight during the Civil War. And then from women, a woman's perspective and from an African American perspective. Before each prompt, we had a class period where I taught them a lot about these three groups of individuals. So I taught them a lot about life of a soldier. I read them the book um, Soldier's Heart by Gary Paulson. So they had that background knowledge. Um, I gave a presentation on what it was like in the camps, what it was like on the battlefields. And the same for women, I talked about women spies, women nurses, women on the home front, and women who actually fought in the Civil War. And I did the same with African Americans. I talked about women that had to stay on the home front, um, who were still enslaved. I talked about the men who fought, and the men who were forced to work in the Confederate ranks. My instructional goals for these prompts were for students to be able to describe the hardships faced by the different groups of people through descriptive interpretive writing. So I wanted them to take the information that I gave them, interpret it, rationalize it, and reason through writing how the Civil War affected these groups of people, the impacts that it had on these groups of people, how it changed their identity, how it made them develop as individuals. So the first prompt was the soldier's prompt. Um, I chose two different students, Sophie and Jack. Um, Jack is a good student, but he oftentimes is quite sidetracked because he's a sixth grade boy. 
So he um, was, was very into the social scene. He used to be um, kind of isolated on his own, and then probably about two or three weeks after I got there, he turned into the class clown. He got really, really social, and um, he kind of put academics to the side, which is typical, I feel like, for sixth grade boys. Um, Sophie's an excellent student. She um, wasn't always at the top of the class, but throughout the year she worked really, really hard. After talking to my cooperating teacher, um, she told me that she worked hard, she did everything she could to better herself. And um, so I wanted to see with Sophie if she was just good at the facts and memorization part of history, or if she could um, rationalize and reason um, and put herself in the shoes of someone from history and understand the importance of writing to learn about history. And with Jack, I wanted to see if he would take feedback seriously, if he would take his assignment seriously, or if he would continue to do the minimum to get a good grade. So that's what I tried to do. Um, for assignment one, I gave a short lecture on the lives of soldiers during the Civil War. And then I told them that I wanted them to write a descriptive um, letter to someone back home. I showed them examples of letters and um, I had them remind me, tell me what they thought a descriptive paragraph was or descriptive letter was. They had learned it previously in the year and um, I wanted them to jog their memories a little bit. Then I gave written feedback and I also gave verbal feedback when I gave these assignment back, assignments back. I told them to include lots of factual information and lots of descriptive adjectives, words, similes, metaphors, anything to make to paint an accurate picture for the lives of these soldiers. So um, when I returned these two with the feedback, I gave them more verbal feedback as a class as well and told them um, to just improve, continue to improve by adding more and more description, um, work on sentence structure and flow and organization. I didn't count off for grammar solely because a lot of the examples that I showed um, had soldiers who were not very literate um, writing and the kids got really into it and wanted to not write in proper grammar because of that. So I, was, I said, okay, that's fine. Um, I won't count off for that. You can write. Although Jack still used pretty proper grammar in his. Um, Jack had a lot of factual evidence, not as much um, description, and so we had a lot of both. Um, I told both of them to add in more rich vocab, um, rich adjectives, add in similes and metaphors where appropriate. And for assignment two, Sophie definitely did that for the women's letter. Um, she used phrases like, a woman as innocent as a porcelain doll. And she really worked the paragraph, she worked the letter, she, um, she took my feedback very seriously. She also incorporated things from the information that she had learned from the soldier's um, lesson. Jack, on the other hand, he still was solid, he was good. Um, he did, he had more description and more facts than the other students did, but he didn't really add in that much description um, about the life of women. He just kind of talked about being a nurse and he could have added definitely more. But all in all, it was, it was good. And then for the third assignment, I gave them this rubric, which is pretty much how I've been grading all along, but then I um, gave it to them for this one. And I explained it to them in class, and asked if they had any questions. For all the assignments, they had in class time to work on them, so that they could ask me questions. And they had two days to complete the assignments. That was part of my strategy, to kind of keep it fresh in their mind, not give them a week, but just give them those two days, some in-class time to work on it, so that they could um, ask me questions and they had time to complete it and not have to worry about it at home. So for assignment three, um, Sophie's was probably the best in the class. She included everything that she had learned so far, so not just about African Americans and discrimination in the camps. It was everything that she had learned, she incorporated it. And she had very rich descriptions. Um, Jack had, again, good evidence. He talked about the discrimination. He talked about the food in the camps. Um, so he had good details, but again, it wasn't as descriptive of, as I would have liked to have seen. So, but that's okay. Overall analysis, um, Sophie definitely needs a little bit of grammar improvement, but I didn't grade on grammar. Um, but in the future, I would like to see her improve on that. 
She included great factual information. She understood that writing was a way of learning, that if she really put herself in the character, she would learn more about the Civil War. She would um, encompass everything and apply it to social studies. And she took feedback very, very seriously. Jack didn't take feedback very seriously. Um, he continued to do what he had to do to get by. Uh, but he did include good factual evidence, especially in relation to the rest of the class. Um, and his descriptions needed improvement overall. But they were both um, very good responses. And as a whole class, I was very pleased with the amount of time that they put into these. They really liked writing the letters. They liked getting into the characters. And um, by the third one, I think Jack was a little over it. We were about to go on spring break. So I think he was kind of done with it. He's like, I'm ready to, to be on a break. And so were some of the other kids. But Sophie kept up that drive that she has. As a reflection, um, improvement is always good. So just continuing to improve, continuing to edit, continuing to improve. My learning goals were met. I felt that they did take it seriously. They did get into the character and they did learn a lot from their um, from the information that I gave them. Um, for the future, I think if I had the whole year, if I had come in at the beginning of the year, um, their writing definitely would have improved more if I had had the whole um, year to do that, to work with them. But having someone come in midway through, it's kind of challenging because you can't really do everything that you want to do. You're in a time crunch. Um, also, I would have them self-evaluate themselves and I would conduct peer reviews and have one-on-one -on -one conferences, especially with someone like Jack who needs that extra push to um, get through that extra encouragement to actually improve. So, that's all.